The force exists, and it has a scientific basis. But what does that power consist of? If we can define and isolate such a force, how can you or I tap into it? Through vision, commitment, patience, and creative application of knowledge and skill, you can see your goal through to the end. But the ultimate key to your success is persistence and perseverance. You'll find out how to turn problems and setbacks, even agonizing situations, into positive learning experiences that will actually bring you closer to the realization of your goal. And you'll understand the value of never giving up, no matter how tough the journey gets or how endless it seems. Persistence means never giving up. Perseverance means persisting in spite of hardships, opposition, and setbacks. Self-discipline is the power to say, this is what I really want in life, and this is how I'm going to get it. And if I have to give up some other things, I will, because it's worth it in the long run. To be self-disciplined, you must learn to develop the kind of obsession that glows like a beacon in a storm. You must learn to watch that light and steer your course towards it, no matter what gets in your way or how long it takes. Like a sailor, you must learn to use the skills that will point you in the right direction. And you must keep on using all your knowledge, skill and energy to stay on course until you have reached your destination. With a steady, sustained effort that never falters, never crumbles and never gets lost in unimportant details, you can be anything you want. Success consists of self-discipline, and self-discipline consists of doing whatever you have to do for as long as you have to do it to get where you want to be. If you truly want to seek your fortune, you must develop the inner strength to relentlessly pursue your vision day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, until it becomes a reality. And it will become a reality. Just think, how long did it take you to learn how to walk? For how many weeks and months did you struggle to stand upright? How many bruises did you get from falling down? And how many times did you pick yourself up and try again? You learned to walk because as a toddler, you became obsessed with learning to walk. You were determined to learn, no matter how hard it was at first or how long it was going to take. Every step you took was a small victory, and every time you fell down, it was just an excuse to start all over. Children are naturally self-disciplined because children believe that everything is possible. Children don't say, I can't do it. Children say, I want to do it. When you want something badly enough and when you believe in it strongly enough, self-discipline will get it for you. Self-discipline is the most powerful tool you own for bridging the gap between wishful thinking and real fulfillment. You can have those good things by developing the self-discipline to achieve them. Einstein said, the more I learn, the more I realize I don't know. The more I realize I don't know, the more I want to learn. If you have the self-discipline to see your efforts through, you can learn anything at any age. Whatever you have to learn, no matter how abstract or detailed the information, if it's necessary for your vision, then you can embody that information with your vision. Then it becomes something real and vital. You can put a handle on it. You have a reference for it. Learning is a lot easier if you have a specific reason to learn. Once you recognize that you have a need to learn, you've taken the first step toward achieving your goal. 
creativity is the byproduct of a disciplined, well-informed mind. A mind that is using its storehouse of knowledge to solve problems and achieve goals. The more you learn, the more creative you can become. The belief in yourself as someone who is capable of learning is 90% of the learning hurdle. The other 10% is single-minded application mixed with ability. Much of your own belief in yourself as someone who is capable of learning complex material may have been educated right out of you in school. Take math, for example. Many people have learning blocks when it comes to math. They feel that they just don't have the aptitude to learn complex mathematical concepts. What most of these people lack is not the aptitude for math, but the application of self-discipline. Math requires progressive learning. You have to master one concept before you can go on to the next. If you miss a few steps in between, then it's really easy to get lost. And once you get lost, it's nearly impossible to catch up. To stay on top in math requires a daily effort of study. Most people who enter math think that they can get by with a minimum of effort. Most of these people are intelligent. They can get by in most other courses by just coasting. They think they can do the same thing in math. But soon they get behind and can't catch up and usually do poorly in the course. After such an experience, they label themselves as poor in math. They carry this label with them throughout their lives. Actually, they probably had and have the aptitude, but not the attitude. Their life's potential was stunted by a false assumption. Breaking the cycle of a negative attitude may not be easy, but once you do, you'll be far less inclined to get back into the cycle. That's why small steps and small accomplishments are so important in pursuing a macro goal. Once you have successfully learned a subject or skill, it bolsters your confidence in your ability to learn other skills. Once you've proven to yourself that a negative concept you had was wrong, you begin to realize that all of your negative concepts may be wrong. What you couldn't do in the past, you can now do. You can do it because finally you believe you can do it. Your past, in which you may have been labeled or labeled yourself as a non-learner, is precisely that, your past. It is not your present. It has little relation to what you are capable of accomplishing now. What has happened to many of us is that we have been conditioned into a negative feedback loop where learning is concerned. The step-by-step -step accumulation of new skills is the way to break this loop and replace it with a much more positive cycle. Most of us, at the time we are exposed to our greatest concentration of education, haven't developed the necessary self-discipline skills to be able to take advantage of it. All requires seasoning, the accumulation of knowledge over time, the perseverance to stick with a task over a long period of time, sometimes decades, the ability to find pleasure in the accomplishment of steps toward a goal, rather than seeking the instantly gratifying quick fix. All these are the hallmarks of the self-discipline. What do you want that you're willing to pay the price for? What means so much to you that you'll spend weeks, months, or years pursuing it? Start thinking about your most cherished dream because with the power of self-discipline, you're finally going to be able to achieve it. You'll learn how to gain the knowledge and skills that will set you on the path to success. And you'll learn to develop the kind of positive strength it takes to stay on that path until you have reached the very end. Once you get a taste of how intoxicating, of how free self-discipline feels, you'll be hooked on it for life. Behind every great achiever, there's another achiever. 
It may be someone close to home, a parent, teacher, or friend. It may be someone who's currently famous. Or it may be a historical or mythological figure. When you get your shot of motivation, you become enthusiastic and energetic. When the shot wears off, you get sluggish and lethargic. The truth is, to be truly effective in the long term, motivation must come from within. I'd like to point out that acquiring self-discipline is a never-ending process. There won't come a day when you wake up in the morning and say, yes, I'm finally self-disciplined now. There's nothing more I need to do to develop strength of character and determination of will. Self-discipline requires a lifetime of commitment. This doesn't mean you won't develop the habits of self-discipline in a relatively short period of time. It simply means that you must always be vigilant about how you are approaching your goals and what your purpose in life really is. It's all too easy to get sidetracked in something that feels comfortable but is not what you really set out to achieve. Every small victory will become a cause for celebration and a chance to renew your faith in your own ability to achieve whatever it is you want in life. And as you achieve it, you will find yourself becoming the kind of person you've always admired. The kind of person who could pursue a goal so single-mindedly, so stubbornly, and so patiently that he or she could not help but achieve it. It would be nice if we were all born with the patience, drive, and skill it takes to achieve any long-range goal or complete any long-term project. But we're not. Self-discipline is a learned behavior. What do you value above all else? What would you like to be remembered for? One other myth about the acquisition of knowledge has it that you can get too old to learn. This bit of fallacious thinking has been handed down in the aphorism that you can't teach old dogs new tricks. It's worth laying to rest. To keep young, one must keep growing. <laughs>